Today on Plug and Play, we're going to be checking out Golfoss from Sound Theory. What's up YouTube, Craig Peters here and welcome back to another episode of Plug and Play. It's been a little while, but we're back. And the plugin that we're gonna be checking out today, it's called Golfoss from Sound Theory. So last year's now me and a few of the Sound Iron guys had a chance to walk around and uh, we came across the Golfoss booth and Nathan Bowler, who also works at Sound Iron, was telling me about it. We didn't get a chance to check it out, but I always had it in the back of my head and I started seeing other people talking about it too. So I reached out to them and they were kind enough to send me a copy. So we're gonna be checking that out today. Now what I really like about this plugin is that feature-wise and control-wise it's very minimal, but what it does is extremely powerful. And it's not one of those take a shit mix and turn it into a gold mix. That's not what it does. Like if if your if your mixes aren't sounding good, don't rely on this to fix it. That's not what it's for. What it's for is that if let's say you're about 80% there, 90% there and you want to just get a little bit more clarity out of certain groups, maybe you have some uh, some buses where the things are just a little bit cloudy and you want to throw Golfoss on a few of those and then on your on your master bus, you can really start to get some instant clarity, but you have to know what you're doing. So let's go ahead and check it out on a metal mix. This is something that I was working on some pre-production for some destroying of the void stuff. Um, the mix isn't that great, but I want to show you how it basically takes a huge wave of audio and just basically calculates it and takes it and makes it sound better. All right, so the track we're going to be checking out, like I said, it's going to be a, it's a pretty dense metal mix. There's a lot of orchestral elements. There's a lot of uh, heavy drums, guitars. It's just it's pretty it's pretty packed. So I really want to see how Golfas can take this and sort of uh, clean it up a little bit and just uh, show you guys some of the parameters, how it works, and how I would tend to use it. Right now you can see there's nothing coming through here. So, so as of right now, there's nothing being fed into Golfoss. Now, when it comes to this plugin, you see there's recover and tame. This is pretty much where once you start increasing these, that's when you start hearing some differences and that's when these other controls start to come into play. So if let's say, all right, I wanna to start to get a little bit more clarity. Um, I want to start maybe um, bringing out some elements that are being masked or maybe I want to take some of the elements that are a little wild and tame them back. So that's pretty much what recover and tame is. So tame, what it does is it takes all these sort of really, really abrasive frequencies, maybe the ones that are a little bit more overpowering, and then it starts to kind of bring them back a little bit. And then recover, what it does is it takes some of the frequencies that are being masked and brings those out a little bit. So you're sort of, you know, being able to shape it a little bit more to, to get a little bit more clarity, get a lot of clarity actually. And then, um, yeah, so let's go ahead and just start turning up the tame and the recover and see what happens. So you can see I literally haven't touched anything else. All I did was bring up the tame and recover and you can already hear a difference. So now I'll just go ahead and bypass it and unbypass it. And that's literally just turning it up 30% on recover and tame. So when it comes to bias, what it is, is when you bring the bias down, it favors the tame. And then when you bring it up, it favors the recover. So you can play around with this and just sort of see what sounds better to you. Uh, let's just go ahead and bring it down and up and see what happens. So pretty much uh, as I started bringing it down, it started sounding a little bit more brighter. Uh, so I think I'll leave it a little, let's say yeah, a little bit, a little bit, like around 10, minus 10. And then after that, you have controls for brighten and boost. Now brighten will just kind of brighten up the overall mix. Uh, this is nice for if, let's say, your mix is kind of dark 
and you want to brighten it up, then you just go ahead and throw some brighten on there and see what happens. So that's sounding pretty good. Now what I like about Boost is it kind of puts that final polish on it. And what I mean by that is um, I usually tend to, whenever it comes to the first EQ on my mix bus, I like to do sort of like a top-down approach where you have uh, like a high shelf and a low shelf. So you have this kind of curve. And it sort of does that for you in this plugin. So it'll sort of bring out some of the highs, some of the lows, but, but without getting too crazy and manipulating the volume. So let's go ahead and hear how that sounds. <laughs> We'll go ahead and exaggerate it and see how that sounds. Yeah, you can see that's way too much low end. So like I said, with this, it's very easy to go too far. Um, what you're wanting to do with this is use it for just kind of removing that layer of muffle. That's kind of what I want to do. I want, it, I want it to just give me that little bit of clarity that it didn't have before, but without going too far. It's very easy to go too far with this, so we don't want to do that. That already, to me, sounds better. And, and you can use this on buses. You can use it on the mix bus. I would tend to use it more on buses and in the mix bus. I wouldn't necessarily use this on individual tracks. You can. On an individual track, that I would use more of like a, like a fab filter, like a Q3 or something, just to really kind of uh, clean up that individual track if it you know, has its own issues. But this, I would use this as more of like when you have like a bunch of drums or a bunch of guitars, something all fed into one thing and you want to clean that up, I would use this. You also have some other controls as well e that are easy to miss. Uh, these right here, so let's say you're like, I don't want Gold Foss to touch my low end, I don't want Gold Foss to touch my high end. So you're gonna bring these in just to the point where you want it, where you feel like, okay, like I like my high end the way it is. I don't, I, I'm more focused around like the low mids or something, you can, you can focus on that a little bit more and which is cool because uh, maybe you don't want this touching all your audio, just specific aspects of the frequency range. Yeah, automatically when I unbypass it, I feel like everything kind of comes forward a little bit more. And that's just, you know, from a matter of clarity. So what I like about this plugin is that it's different than how a fab filter is. I would use that for more of the surgical type EQs, but I would use something like this, like I said, for throwing it on buses or the mix bus, for just getting that extra level of clarity because the stuff that's going on under the hood, it's, it's pretty crazy. I mean, I can't even start to understand how they even went about programming it and scripting it and all that stuff but it's a really cool plugin and I definitely suggest checking it out if you're into some EQs that maybe handle audio in a different way. I feel that's kind of what this is. And it's definitely unlike anything I've seen and it's pretty cool and there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. I've barely even touched with how, how much stuff you can do with it. So definitely uh, check it out if you're in the market for a new EQ. Uh, I think it's a pretty, uh, pretty awesome one. So my overall thoughts on this plugin, it's pretty rad. I think it's way different than any other EQs that I have. If you're in the market for a new EQ, let's say you got Fab Filter and Waves, and you're a little bit apprehensive, ah, why do I need another EQ? Is because this EQ does something way different than all those other ones do. And the way it handles audio is just in a completely different and unique way than anything I've ever seen. So it's definitely worth checking out. You can actually trial it on the website, I believe. So go to soundtheory.com, check it out. I'm really looking forward to seeing what else these guys come up with because this already, it's, uh, it's pretty mind-blowing as far as what it does. So definitely check it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you have Goldfoss, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. 
Uh, do you think it's worth it? Do you think it seems cool? I definitely think it is. So uh, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take it easy.